So we just have a basic income tax calculation question here for tax law at UTS. So, question. Marty, a resident taxpayer, has a salary of $30,000. He also earned $2,000 in bank interest, $7,000 in fully franked dividends, with $3,000 attached franking credits. Marty's employer withheld $5,000 in PAYG tax throughout the year. Calculate Marty's tax liability for the year ended 30 June 2016. So I've highlighted a few terms in red. So the reason I've done that um, is to highlight a few things. So a resident taxpayer means that Marty as an individual is eligible for the low income tax offset. It also means you need to use the tax rates specified for resident taxpayers. Second, I've got fully franked and franking credits. So basically, whenever you see a fully franked dividend or franking credits uh, in the question, it means you need to consider the franking tax offset later on in the process. Also highlighted PAYG tax, which means we'll also need to consider that when offsetting, offsetting our basic income tax liability. Additionally, I've highlighted 30 June 2016, basically just to make sure that we use the correct tax bracket. So the first step um, is to calculate our taxable income. So taxable income is uh, assessable income minus deductions. So we don't have any deductions in this question, but our assessable income is made up of the salary being $30,000, the bank interest being $2,000, the fully franked dividend, which is $7,000, and also those franking credits, which are $3,000. So that comes to $42,000. And if we had any deductions, we'd then take them away from this total. So that is our taxable income. All those amounts are specified in the question. So you just pull them out. So after we've worked out our taxable income, we need to work out our basic income tax liability. So what we know is that our taxable income is $42,000. And so we just need to look at the tax brackets here. You can see we've got um, the tax brackets for 2015-16 as specified for the question. So we know that $42,000 falls into this bracket here between $37,001 and $80,000. So if we have a look at the column on the right, we can see that it tells us the tax on this income. So if we're gonna work out our tax liability, we'll do, so we look at the column on the right, and we go right. So it tells us that we're gonna have $3,572 of tax, plus 32 and a half cents for each dollar over $37,000. So the $3,572 mentioned here covers all the tax for the amount up to $37,000. So it represents the tax or the income which sits in these brackets here, the first two brackets. What we then need to do is we need to work out the 32 and a half cents for each dollar over $37,000. So we do this in this calculation here, so we know that our taxable income is $42,000. And we know that we're trying to work out the $5,000 that are above that $37,000 bracket. So what we do, we know by itself here, this would be $5,000. And we multiply that by 32 and a half cents. And so in total, that comes to $5,197,000. So what we've done is we've gone $3,572, which represents the tax we need to pay, or the income up to $37,000. And then the second part of the calculation here is telling us the tax we need to pay on any amount over $37,000 but still within this third tax bracket. So we know that we have $5,000 sitting in this tax bracket. So we multiply that by the 32 and a half cents, which is specified here. 
So that plus the $3,572 gives us the total of $5,197. Okay. So after doing that, we need to calculate the low income tax offset. Now, the way we do that is we look at the um, sort of, I guess, calculation table here, which is provided by the ATO. And for 2015-16, the maximum low income tax offset is $445. So if you earn between zero and $37,000, automatically get the $445 maximum offset, no calculations required. However, our taxable income is $42,000, which sits in this middle bracket here, which means we need to apply this calculation. What this calculation is saying is, we have our maximum offset of $445, but for every dollar over $37,000, our offset is reduced by one and a half cents. So, at $37,000, that is the threshold for when the offset begins to reduce. We know that our taxable income is $5,000 above the threshold, so that means we need to reduce it by one and a half cents for every single dollar it is over that threshold. So the way we do that is we have our $445 maximum offset and we take away from that our taxable income, which we know is $42,000, minus the $37,000, which is the threshold at which it starts reducing. If we know below $37,000, get the maximum offset. Anything above that begins to reduce. So we multiply the amount above the threshold by the one and a half percent. So that represents the um, reduction in the offset by one and a half cents for every dollar we are above the threshold. So it comes to a total of $370 if you put that in your calculator. So one thing to mention about the low income tax offset is it's non-refundable. This means that it cannot reduce your tax liability further than zero. So if your tax liability was $300 and you're eligible for $370 of tax offset, it could only take it to zero. It couldn't take you into a refund. It can only take you to a, a neutral tax position. However, if your tax liability is more than the offset, then you can apply the full amount of the offset. Okay. So after that, we look at the franking tax offset. So in the question, it tells us that the franking credits attached to our dividend are $3,000. So if you are told what the franking credits are, that's automatically the amount you use for your franking tax offset. So that's pretty simple, it'd just be $3,000. However, if you are not told what the franking credits attached to the dividend are, you'll have to work it out. So if we had to do that, this is how we'd work it out. We know the fully franked dividend is $7,000. We know that the company tax rate is 30%. So what a fully franked dividend is, it's a distribution of profit from the company to the shareholder after they've paid 30% tax on the amount. So they've started with an amount They've then paid the tax of 30% to the tax office, then they've given you what is left. So the fully franked dividend we receive is the after-tax amount. So the franking credits actually represent the 30% company tax which has been paid. So if we want to work out what the franking credits are, if we haven't been given them, we can do it by using this calculation. You put in the amount of the fully franked dividend, which we know is 7,000 in this case. You then multiply it by 30 over 70. Now, what this calculation is doing, by dividing $7,000 by 70%, we are increasing it to the pre-tax amount. So 100%, what it was before the tax was taken out. 
So in this case, it takes it to $10,000. We then multiply it by 30%. And so we know that the company tax rate is 30%. So by dividing it by 70, we've taken up to the pre-tax amount. Then by multiplying the pre-tax amount by 30%, we know how much tax the company has paid for us. And that amount the company has paid is the franking credit. So in this case, it would be $3,000. So that's how you work out what the franking credits are if you're not actually given the dollar amount. So you can see here, I've just put a little progress table in to keep track of our calculation. We've got the basic income tax liability there. We've got the low income tax offset we calculated in the previous bit. So after the franking tax offset, we move on to POYG. We'll pay as you go. So what the POYG is, is the um, amount of money that has been withheld from your salary by your employer and passed onto the tax office on your behalf so that you can pay your tax liability in a periodic basis so you don't just come to the very end of the process and have to pay a huge lump sum. So it's kind of trying to estimate what your tax liability is and then roughly taking out that amount every time you get paid to try and net off the tax liability. So if that has happened to you during your salary, what you do after you've calculated tax liability, calculated all the offsets, you then take away any PAYG withholding tax from your tax liability because the PAYG is tax you've already paid to the tax office. So if they're saying you owe them $6,000, but you've already paid $5,000 during the year, then rightly, you should only pay them $1,000. So that's how that works. So we've come to the end of our calculation. You can see that we calculated earlier basic income tax liability of $5,197. From this, we took away the low income tax offset being $370. We then worked out that we're entitled to $3,000 worth of franking credits. And the question tells us that we've already paid $5,000 to the tax office throughout the year. This brings us to a net refundable amount of $3,173. This means that the tax office will actually pay us back $3,173 because we've already paid more tax or we're entitled to refunds that we have not been compensated for yet. So the basic steps we followed to do this calculation is we worked out what our taxable income was, which is assessable income minus deductions. We then worked out our basic income tax liability using the tax brackets. We calculated the low income tax offset. We then calculated the franking tax offset. And we identified any PAYG tax that we could take away from our liability. And then we determine the net tax payable or refundable to or from the tax office. So I hope the video was useful to you and uh, good luck with any questions.